come on in. Okay, I guess we can start. So for the second and final talk of this session, we welcome Xue yeah, to talk about mean estimation. Please take it away. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So very glad to participate in our paper on quantum non-identical estimation. Um, Xue Ye Cheng, and this is a joint work with my lab mate Wang Xinzhong, my advisor Li Tongyang, and my collaborators Zhang Chenyi from Stanford University and Hu Dachen Zhonghan from Peking University. So in this paper, we analyze a new setting of the quantum mean estimation problem. We focus on the non-identical quantum quantum random variables. We systematically analyze this new setting about the upper bound, the lower bound. We define what is the non-identity of quantum random variables, and we will see how it makes the quantum mean estimation problem different. Uh, so let's just uh, begin from the ID case. So assume that we are given n random samples. They are independent and identically distributed with the mean mu variance sigma square. And our task is to estimate mu to some additive error epsilon. So for this problem, uh, for classical computers, the upper bound and the lower bound are both sigma square or epsilon square. And for the upper bound, the sample mean estimator can achieve it well. Uh, let's just uh, design the estimator uh, mu, height, mu height n as the mean of the samples. Then by calculation, we just know that the expectation is mu and the variance is sigma square or n. So by chip shields in a quantity, we know that the probability that our sample mean estimator is beyond the additive viral epsilon. This probability is smaller than sigma square over n epsilon square. So at n in O sigma square or epsilon square, this sample mean estimator successfully carries out the mean estimation task. And the quantum computers can do this task better by using the amplitude estimation method. It can achieve tilde O sigma over epsilon quantum query complexity, which achieves a quadratic speed up. So, but this is only for the ID case. So what happens if those random samples, uh, they are still independent, but no, they are not identically distributed. So for this case, the uh, for the classical computer, the sample mean estimator still works. So by the same method, by the same calculation, we know that the expectation is still mu, and the variance is still sigma square bounded by sigma square over n. So by the same method, we know that the same upper bound sigma square over epsilon square still holds. But what about the quantum computers? So uh, for quantum computers, the formal method is not applicable because because the non-identity, the amplitude estimation method can no longer be used directly. So for this setting, uh, do we still have some quantum algorithm to achieve some quantum speed up or is there some fundamental limits? So we will have some lower bounds. So this is what our paper, uh, our paper just answered these questions. So um, let me talk about the problem formulation first. So for the quantum mean estimation problem, the standard input model is a quantum random variable, which is a pair HOX, where OX is a unitary operator, which acts on the Hilbert space H and it performs this mapping. It maps the zero quantum state to this quantum state. We can consider that when we measure the second register, it gives a result X with the probability APX. So this is exactly the distribution of the random variable, the classical random variable X. So uh, to some degree, uh, this quantum state can be seen as a generator, although it can be used for only once of this classical random variable. 
And we say that one query to this unitary OX is one quantum sample. And uh, we, we say the number of the calls to this OX is the quantum query complexity. And uh, in addition, uh, for uh, generally, we cannot just get this distribution for free. Uh, always it requires some uh, calculations. So always we need another register for uh, doing calculation for uh, storing data and so on. So always we assume that here is, a, is some unknown garbage unit states facts here. And this is quantum random variable. And our quantum non-identical mean estimation problem is that Consider given a sequence of quantum random variables, OX1 to OXT, they have the same mean mu. And we are given another parameter, the, the, the repetition parameter M. It means that for each of those quantum random variables, so different quantum random variables, we can query them. Uh, if, for example, we query to some OXI, and this query can also be a query to OXI regular or some controlled version of them at most M times. So uh, uh, some query to each of those different quantum random variables at most M times. And our task is still estimates the mean mu with that T Y epsilon with probability at least two over three. So let's dig into a little deeper to these definitions. So in this quantum non-identical mean estimation problem, the only constraint we put on those random variables is only that uh, they should have the same mean mu. However, the random the quantum random variable is a uh, unitary; it contains much information. So we will see that the non-identity of the quantum random variables means much more than classical random variables. First, the random variables they include the probability distribution Px can be different as well as they have the same mean. And this is just the same as the classical uh, as the classical random variables. Besides, since the quantum random variable are unitary, inside of only a distribution, they still have some garbage state and they can be also different. In addition, in this definition, we have only defined the act of OX on the zero state. So the whole complementary state of the zero subspace is not defined. So this is also a resource of the non-identity. So we have these three different kinds of non-identity. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So why is the so there are many ways to define the a, a oracle, right? So there's also an oracle that can be defined just with this uh, distribution px on x. So my question for you is, why do you need this garbage state? Is that a particular reason? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, so I, I guess the, the uh, one reason is that uh, this is a standard uh, input model of quantum mean estimation problem. So uh, many in literature, in the literature, many uh, paper about uh, the, the, the set problems is, uh, as the, this input model. And I think one reason that people do this is that uh, we uh, study the mean estimation problem for application. Uh, uh, maybe uh, we have some uh, some other problems and it may uh, call this uh, mean estimation problem, problem as a subroutine. Uh, and in this uh, algorithm, we may construct some unitary to, uh, to build this distribution. Uh, however, in this processing, uh, we cannot just uh, calculate this distribution for free. It always requires some calculation. So FX here is always for the calculation and for the store some data and other things. OK? OK, thank you. Uh, so this is a non-identity of the quantum random variables. And later we will see how we can overcome this non-identity to design some efficient quantum algorithms and how we uh, utilize this non-identity to prove a lower bound. And now let's uh, look through the results first. In this table, we, I only list the results for Bernoulli random case, uh, but some of the results can be generalized to uh, a more general case. Uh, we note that for classical random variables, as well as the mean mu is fixed, the, 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 
the whole classical Bernoulli random variable aspects, they cannot be identical. But for the quantum case, they can because we have we, we still have other resources of the non-identity. So our results on list here, if the repetition number m is in omega of one over epsilon, which means we can query each of the different quantum random variables, so x1 to xt, for a few times, just a, a just a log factor. Then we have a we have our upper bound of quantum query complexity one or epsilon log one or epsilon. So in this case, we achieve a quadratic speed up. It is just as an ID case, and it is near optimal up to some log factors. And this 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 result can also be generalized to the sub Gaussian case. We just uh, we only have to replace all these ones here to the sub Gaussian parameter k. So and and for the m equals to one case, which means for those different quantum random variables, we are allowed to query each of them for only one time. In this case. We have a quantum lower bound, which is omega sigma square or epsilon square. I use omega square here because it can be generalized to the bounded variance case. So compared with the classical bound, we can see that for this m equals to one case, we can achieve no quantum speed up. In addition, we also have another quantum lower bound is for general m, which is omega one over epsilon m. So from this, we can conclude that uh, for m is in O1, for constant m, if the occurrence epsilon is not very large and not very small, we can also achieve no quantum speed up. OK, now let's take a closer look to the upper bound. So for the upper bound, we state this this theorem for bounded variables, since that the sub Gaussian case by function, it can be easily reduced to the bounded case. So assume that our non-identical quantum random variables are bounded in an interval LH, and we are allowed to query each one of those different quantum random variables for a few times for uh, omega log H minus L over epsilon times in this setting. We have a quantum upper bound, which is O H minus L over epsilon many, um, uh, multiplying by a log factor, which achieves a quadratic speed up. So how to prove this? For the, for the bounded variables, we first use the standard method of conditional rotations to encode the mean mu, the wanted mean mu, from the distribution to this Amplitude. So, uh, so obtaining this quantum state, as long as we can estimate this amplitude, we have an estimator for the mean mu. In this process, we can see that at the beginning, there are non identity in the distribution and in the Gabriel state. However, after it, the non identity in the distribution is transferred to the Gabriel state. But how to deal with this non-identity in the Gabriel state? It is impossible because uh, since there is such a non-identity, we cannot apply the standard amplitude estimation method directly. So our solution is to use an uncomputing trick. First, we, uh, we, we start from the zero quantum state and we apply a unitary UI. UI is this unitary. And then we apply a C not gate to copy the information of those one and zero to a new register. And then we apply a UI dagger to uncompute this garbage state. So after this process, we obtain a unitary VI. When it is applied to the zero quantum state, we obtain this quantum state, it contains two Component. The, the, the first component, it is totally clean. Here, it contains no non identity and only the information of Q, which encodes our wanted mean mu. So, it, it is 
so this component can be used to estimate the mean. And the second part is only a garbage, and it gathers all the non-identity, uh, all the non-identity in the quantum random variable. So, and in this garbage, the first two registers are orthogonal to the zero zero. So, the first and the second component are orthogonal. And since the amplitude of the first, the clean part, is more bounded by some constant. So O log one or epsilon cos to this V I amplifies this this clean part to norm one minus epsilon. And then this garbage part is narrowed to a very small norm and it can be regarded as a small error. And we, we can just uh, ignore it and directly apply the standard amplitude estimation. So this is for the upper bound. We just uh, gather the non-identity also from the distribution to the garbage state, and then they are all gathered in the, this real garbage, and, it, and the norm of it is narrowed to a very small space, and then we finish the upper bound. Okay, now let's come to the lower bound. For the m equals to one case, which means we are allowed to query to those non-identical quantum random variables, each for only once, and we assume that we have only a very small working register. This is due to some uh, technical reason. In this case, we have only we, we have a quantum lower bound, which is omega, uh, which is omega sigma square or epsilon square, which means we cannot achieve any quantum speed up in the setting. So, how to prove this? We can prove that. Uh, this lower bound holds even for a simpler case, even for the OX1 to OXT encodes the same random variable, the, the same classical random variable X, even for the distribution is the same. And we still have the non-identity of the garbage state for XI and the the the, the non-identity of the action of OXI on the complementary space. So consider any of all any fixed quantum algorithm, which starts from the zero state and contains T queries. We can always assume that the qubits used in the algorithm is divided into two parts, the query register Q and the working register W. And each time when we want to apply a query, it is applied to the query register. This is reasonable since, <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm slightly confused about your notation. So uh -huh. you use x o x one oh. as a of, of the sub subscript, mm -hmm. but now in the equation you use superscript bracket. Mm -hmm. I are yeah, they yeah, the yeah. same? Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. I, I know what, what you mean. Uh, so here uh, I use o, o x one to x t, which means they encode different random variable x one to x t. But in this setting, we will prove that the lower bound holds even for they encode the same random variable. Oh, so, so you just change the garbage state yes, to a different state, yes, but the distribution yes. are the same. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's come back to the. Uh, to, to any fixed quantum random algorithm. So it can be described as this a sequence of unitaries. We start from the zero quantum state and then apply an arbitrary unitary U0 and then and, and, and then a query OX1 or OX1 dagger to the query register. And then another arbitrary unitary and so on. And finally, we get a final quantum state phi T and the measurement of it gives the estimation result. So for any fixed quantum algorithm A, which means a fixed sequence of U0, U1 to UT, and a fixed A1 to AT, we want to find a hard instance, OX1 to OXT. We want to find a hard instance to disrupt the performance of the quantum algorithm to lead to a worst possible outcome. So looking at the sequence, we may think that oh, uh, the, 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 these OXI, they are unitaries and we have only defined its action on the zero quantum state. And the whole complementary space, the action of OXI is not defined. So this is an identity we may utilize. 
So we we may utilize this to uh to construct a hard instance to 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 build a hard hard instance to close the lower bound. So later we just uh, concretize this intuition. We define the effective component. So uh, we first define the phi begin and phi end quantum state. It may seem like a, a little complicated, but uh, uh, in fact, uh, for OXT, for OXI here, we only know its act on the zero state. And for any OXT, OXI dagger, we only know its action on this quantum state. So here, uh, we just uh, use phi begin and phi end to express, uh, to express the both the case for OXT and OXT dagger. And we define a pi begin projector. It projects any quantum algorithm on the query register to the phi begin quantum state, which is the only state we know how OXT, OXT AT acts on it. So the effective component is defined as each time after we apply an arbitrary unitary, and when the query register, uh, when the quantum state in the query register has become an arbitrary quantum state, we apply some, we, we apply the the projector to project it to the phi begin quantum state, the only one we know that how OXCAT acts on it. So this. Effective components are, are fixed despite of the non identity of OXT, and they are the only fixed part, the only known part, the only part we cannot manipulate in along the processing. And we can prove that on the other side, uh, on the one hand, they are the only components with positive contribution, and on the other hand, they can be prepared by a quantum algorithm with constant query depth. So such a quantum algorithm cannot provide quantum speed up for this non-identical mean estimation problem, and so and neither does any quantum algorithm. So this is a lower bound. This is uh, we also have another lower bound for general M, and it does not require the uh, small working register assumption. Okay, so let's make a conclusion. In this paper, we it's for the non-identity of the quantum random variable, and they have uh, we have three different types of non-identity, and we show that how we overcome the non-identity on the Gabriel state in the for the upper bound to design efficient algorithm, and we and we see that how we use the non-identity on the action of the complementary space to prove the lower bound. So this is our paper. And thank you for your attention. This is a QR code. Uh, if you are interested in more details, welcome to scan it. And for further communication or questions, uh, welcome to contact me by email. So thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. We have plenty of time for the questions. So what are some applications of this in which situation do you want to do someone does someone want to you know estimate mean of non-identical variables oh yeah you, you mean uh, does it have some application uh, okay um uh, i can see that uh, why we want to why we want to explore this problem is because uh we we were studying some uh, some some problem from uh, uh, quantum reinforcement learning. So in that problem, we just uh, uh, start from some uh, state and uh, and 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 do some action and go to the next state. So at uh, every step, we are on different states. Uh, so it may give. Uh, different uh, unitary operator, but they have something. They have something same. So, uh, in, in this problem, is that we have some uh, different oracles, but they contain some same thing. Uh, in, in our in, in the problem we studied, it is a mean. So this is why we studied this problem. Uh, but uh, in that problem. Uh, in fact, it 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 requires uh, us to uh to uh, query uh, those 
different random variables each for only one time. But uh, you know, in this uh, in this study, we know that for this case, we only have a quantum lower bound. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I think my question related to what uh, this person just uh, asked. So um, normally there are different type of choice of your encoding oracle, right? And I think from your upper bound slides that I can see that why you need to include this garbage state because you mm -hmm. have to operate it on that uh, garbage state in order to in order for your upper, upper bound technique to work. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we consider other other encoding oracle without this garbage state, have you thought about this? Uh, you you mean uh, you mean the case without the garbage state? Yeah, without the garbage state, you just directly encode the distribution into the amplitude. Mm. Uh, I, I guess. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, we have a lower bound for the m equals to one case. So in this case, we can obtain no quantum speed up. Uh, but I think that um. Uh, uh, in most of the uh, quantum mean estimation method or, or quantum amplitude estimation method, it always requires uh, one query to uh, some oracle or, or, or uh, some oracle and uh, and uh, a pair of uh, some oracle to o, o dagger. So the query to O and O dagger always uh, appears uh, in, always appears in pair. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, the result may be uh, if we have some uh, constant, we, we have some uh, co constant repetition number. Uh, it may give some. Uh, it may uh, give some uh, constant that for some uh, for sufficiently small epsilon. Mm -hmm. So bad for constant M and absolute not very small, we can achieve no constant speed up. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, in general, uh, in, these are interesting quest questions to see uh, different powers in terms of this uh, encoding oracle. So if you could, if you could come up with uh, different upper and lower bound for this new oracle, and they are different from your uh, this, uh, this, mm -hmm. this uh, encoding oracle, then this provide another example that different encoding oracle has the power are different yes okay. thank you very much any other questions i do have one question okay. so uh so if i understood correctly your your uh, proof technique your algorithm is like you do amplitude uh, amplification and then you do uh followed by amplitude estimation mm -hmm. is that correct so a few a few years ago in the idd case there's a paper from robin Kotari and brian dono in which they used uh, Grover with complex phases mm -hmm. to shave off their log factor. Mm -hmm. So it's yes, basically yes. like, do you think you could apply stuff like that and shave your log factor? Oh. So it's just like a one over epsilon, not one over epsilon log, one over epsilon. Oh, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I think uh, maybe I uh, didn't fully understand your question. So you, you mean that uh, this uh, the, this cited paper uh, contains small factor or uh, can I? Yeah, there's, there's a follow. I think it, the, the, paper, the paper came around the same time when they improved uh, Aryan and Yassin's paper uh, results. And uh, so they're complex. If you go up to your table. Um, oh. Yeah, the, the, I guess in the I think the first upper in the first uh, line they, they mm -hmm. have the complexity one over epsilon. They can they, they can, the log is not there, mm -hmm. and because they use a, a more fa uh, a more complex mm -hmm. technique, mm -hmm. they basically grow over complex phases. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could use that here mm -hmm. and shave your like, remove the log factor. Uh, uh, first, I think that this log factor uh, is. Uh, difficult to mm. um uh, move, move out, but uh for the for the standard mean estimation problem problem people have results with, without the log factor, uh so, uh so th this paper uh, is published in uh in twenty uh fifteen and th and and in this paper it contains a log factor, yeah, uh, so but I I remember that uh in the in, in this paper, uh, it is just a, a result of factor. It, it uses very complex 
uh, technique and, and some tricks to uh, to 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 uh, remove the more factor. Okay. I see. Okay. Thank you. I think let's uh, thank the speaker again.